I'm pretty excited about this next interview because she's my friend, Dina Amy Kaplan. I've known her for quite a while now, actually, but she is killing it. She is an actress, she's a dancer, and she's also a DJ. So she's a bit too cool for me, I think. Um, but I'm very excited to talk to her. She's absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait for you guys to hear what she's got to say about life and DJ. Dina Amy Kaplan. Now, Jules Sebastian. <laughs> I feel weird calling you by Dina Amy because that's your stage name and I know you as Dina. It's also my real name. I know, but it's weird to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because I've known you for a little I'm just while like, now. Dinks to you. Yeah. Dinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've done a lot of stuff. You're an actress, you're a dancer, and now you're a DJ. <laughs> I've never known you as a DJ, so this is like, it's new to me. That's great. So tell me just. Tell me, take me back to the beginning. Tell me how this all began. You were born and then what? Okay, so I was born in South Africa mm -hmm. and I started dancing from a very young age. Excuse my voice. I don't know why it's all croaky. Have you been out on the channel? No. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's nerves. Um, started off as a ballerina, little ballerina in South Africa. Then we immigrated to Australia when I was about 10. And the first thing I wanted as we landed, like we didn't have a house yet, but I just needed to start ballet. So I went straight to ballet school and trained at the Australian Ballet and thought my life would definitely go down that path. And I danced with Alvin Ailey and I did Lion King for two years and I was very much going to be a professional contemporary dancer. And then I had two really bad injuries that kind of stopped me for a long time and I could never quite catch up. So I started focusing more on acting, which I knew I loved doing and I loved theatre. And then I did lots of that and I found that I loved it so much, but I, you know, as an actor, there's always so much downtime mm. between jobs, no matter how good you are. There's just not enough content being made, you know, particularly in Australia. So unless you're on a long running show, you've always got, you know, four months of incredible work and then usually another four months of nothing. So I wanted to fill my time with something I loved and that has always been music. I got some DJ decks and taught myself how to produce and started recording vocals and mixing and making underground house and techno and random stuff. And this is like from the girl who never used to go out or mm -hmm. had never been to a festival till she was 25. And then I was playing them at 27 so that was pretty cool because <laughs> I feel like it escalated so, so fast. quickly like one minute you are just you know Abigail yeah. in yeah. Dance Academy yeah <laughs> a ballerina an actress and then literally the next minute I'm just you're like you've got your decks and then you're like playing a festival yeah it was crazy I got really lucky I think not many uh, women in the industry were playing what I play and there was this whole movement of inclusive lineups and putting more women on lineups. So I think I came in at the right time mm -hmm. and having a boyfriend who's probably the best DJ in the world helped because I learned incredible tricks really quickly. You know, like most DJs don't record their own vocals mm -hmm. on their tracks. So that was kind of a nice standout point and just got an amazing team behind me. And we just, it just happened. Like I hate saying this, but it just happened organically. Like it really... I feel like everything else in my life I've worked incredibly hard for, mm. but the music th stuff's just kind of happened. If we come to a Dean Amy DJ set, yeah. what, what are we dancing to? We're dancing to house and very tribal house, lots of drumming, mm -hmm. and I use my South African background and my Israeli background as a lot of inspiration, so I like worldly kind of sounds. And then just, like, great, you know, club bangers mm -hmm. and, yeah, a bit of techno. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned your boyfriend, John, mm -hmm. who is in Rufus. Yes. Who who are amazing, of course. You said you got some tips from him. That's so helpful. Yeah. Because he really does know what he's well, doing. Well, yeah, he's honestly, to me, one of the best producers in the world. Like, I believe that. Yeah. Before I even met him, I was such a fan of Rufus. Rufus How Desol. did you meet him? I was a groupie. I went to one of his shows. For real? Yeah. <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like... Love you. <laughs> and <laughs> he was like, love. like I literally said that. I meant his music. Like I was just, I love you. And he was like, I love you too. And then we just swapped numbers, and <laughs> and that was it. Then we fell in love. Yeah, Aww. it was beautiful. So very lucky lady. Yeah, he's a legend. He's a lovely man. 
tell me this is not it for acting because we love you as an actress. Thank you. You're amazing. That's, thank you. Don't know about that, but I, I love acting and that love hasn't gone anywhere. Just having a little momentary pause. Yeah. But I'm actually on like in Australia because I'm on hold for a new show, so hopefully, hopefully I'll be back on screen soon. So we'll see. And, you know, I did four years on Dance Academy and then I did went straight into doing other series and then did the Dance Academy film. And so, like, I've been Abigail for almost five years of my life. Yeah. So it was and nice Abigail, to have a break. She, she, she's very far from who you are as a person, I feel. <laughs> I bloody hope so. <laughs> she's a bit nasty, let's yeah. be honest. She's, yeah, she's not the, um, she's not the nicest girl. <laughs> She's a lot of fun to play when you're having a bad day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just let that inner <laughs> Just let it rip. Yeah. yeah. You are a public person. You've got such a strong following on social media. You. And you've been in the public eye since you were a little kid, basically. You've yeah. been doing this a long time. So mm-hmm. all eyes have been on you. How do you deal with those pressures? When I look at, like, young kids at school at the moment having to deal with, like, who's hot on Instagram and boys and, yeah. like, I don't know how I would have coped with it at that age, but I feel now I did somehow because maybe it was from ballet that gave me like a very, I mean, you just get knocked down permanently in ballet and told you're not good enough. So I was kind of dealt, I dealt with all of that already and Mm. kind of had a maturity about it. And luckily like my fan base, you know, other than the few weirdos you get, they've been really supportive of, all my endeavors you yeah, know and I, yeah. I i really throw the ball at them sometimes like i'm like oh today i'm a dj you know yeah. oh, today i'm back on camera and whatever i do they seem to support yeah so i'm really fortunate that i haven't had too many i've had a few creepy experiences but nothing crazy but i still get messages all the time like oh you're too fat to be a ballerina or something like that and like i just laugh because i think they just forget that there's a person yeah. behind the screen yeah do you just think Oh. I like genuinely find it funny. Okay. Yeah. How do you not let it affect your self-esteem? I've just got enough issues of my own, like that what other people say doesn't dominate my thoughts. Like if I think I'm being the best version of myself, then I'm happy. And like I have enough, you know, self thoughts that I need to overcome that other people's stuff. If it was someone I cared about, like if a family member had said something to me, mm-hmm. I think it would affect me. But like trolls on the internet I just find funny yeah it doesn't so, yeah that's such a healthy way to look at it yeah it's a stranger they don't know who you are yeah I don't really care story. what people think of me who don't know me I care what my friends think of me and my yep. family yeah you <laughs> I think you're okay Thanks. you know <laughs> no it that that is such a healthy healthy thing and a good message to put out there what are you gonna do next well, I'm writing my EP at the moment, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. So that's going to come out in um, July or August. Mm-hmm. So once I've released that, which I think will be three or four tracks, um, I'll then go do a big tour. What is one thing you think you're really great at and what's one thing you wish you could be better at? I think I'm very good at like being able to just make a joke out of things and have a laugh at everything. I think I'm funny. Like, I think I have a good sense of humour. So that's you good. You are. You're funny. Thank you. <laughs> um, and something I wish I was better at. I wish I was better at managing balance better mm-hmm. and therefore managing, like, uh, my anxiety better because I have such highs from performing and, like, travelling and ups and downs and I often lose the balance in it, you know, and I really rely on balance or I become quite anxious yeah so that's something I've been working really hard on and yeah. I'm still finding it to be very challenging what do you do to to make it easier well for me like main thing is exercise mm-hmm. f- just for my moods really not even for anything else just to like <laughs> re-energize me just rituals I guess squeezing in some meditation and all the stuff I used to think was so cliche like ac- actually really helps me getting mm-hmm. A good night's sleep Mm -hmm. in a good bed and not on a tour bus. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Yeah, just getting outdoors, feeling the sun, just small things. What's the most challenging part about what you do or your life in general? Being away from the family, for sure. Like, I've really missed a lot of my nephews growing up and Gemma's pregnancy, and I find that really challenging. And travel in general I struggle with. I'm not a good flyer. 
and that's like 80 percent of what i do yeah so yeah like scared of actually being in the air no it just like makes me feel awful like mm-hmm. i get really nauseous and yep. it takes me a long time to get over jet lag yeah what's the best part about what you do just performing like mm-hmm. me being on stage or creative in any capacity fulfills me like nothing else like yeah. it's just that's me at my absolute happiest mm-hmm. like since i was like this big i was like get a camera in front of me <laughs> Or just give me, you know, a beautiful script to work with Mm -hmm. or let me play a set for two hours to a crowd who appreciate it. That feeling. And and getting different crowds no matter where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so cool. Yep. Exploring those cultures and, What do you do with a tough crowd? Because I have an anxiety attack whenever I see a guy on stage. Like, he doesn't – it doesn't bother him at all. He's been, you know, doing this for such a long time. If it's a – I mean, when you I get started, your from yeah. The crowd, but when they're a bit kind of. Mm. When I started, I took it very personally. Like I thought, yeah. oh, maybe I'm bad. Mm-hmm. But now I've just realized that, you know, sometimes you get a set time or a day where people are just not vibing it and yeah. it's nothing personal. And sometimes the worst sets I've ever played, I'll get messages after being like, oh my God, like that was so incredible. What was that track? Da da da. So I've now learned to just read crowds because Mm -hmm. that's part of your job Mm. but just stay true to what I do and what I do is eccentric and is different Mm -hmm. I don't stick to one genre I change it up so I'm just learning to just if I think I've done a good job to trust that yeah yeah and to always bring it hey just bring it just bring it every time even (laughs) even if the crowd are like oh no matter what you you have to no matter what there was an artist I was watching and the crowd was like empty and no one, mm. and they were giving it like 150%. I was like, how embarrassing. But then I realized like, no, that's what you that's have what to do because if those four people appreciate it, they tell their four friends mm-hmm. and it, you know, it expands. Yeah. Yep. So you just always have to switch it on no matter how tired you are or anything. It's true. Yeah. And I can imagine, I mean, I don't, I've never really auditioned for anything ever in my life except for that MTV thing that I actually got the job, which was the weirdest yeah, day of my did. life. <laughs> but I can imagine that when you, okay, can you cry now? Or can you hysterically laugh over this thing? And there's like four people just deadpan and a camera and yeah. you have to bring it I love it and do you love it that's the challenge no because i'm crazy so i'm like <laughs> make me cry I can do it give me two seconds no i love it i mean I, that's the part of acting to me that's so exciting is the demanding finding parts within yourself and memories that can trigger yeah. you and yeah i mean it's so psychological that's why i think i love it it's fascinating it's just human behavior Is it hard though when you do that and you give everything and you're like exhausted and you're like, I'm really good at this, I'm really good at acting and you've done it and then you don't get the job? You're like, what the? Yeah, that's the worst. But what I've learned about that because I've sat in so many casting rooms just as like a reader Mm -hmm. and what I've learned is there's so many good actors, so many. Mm. And majority of the time they all blow you away, like the good ones. And then it just is like down to like the producer being like, She kind of reminds me of, like, my sister-in-law. Like, Mm -hmm. I think she's got that vibe, you know, or, like, uh, him and her look good together. But, like, there were so many options for great actors. So I try to just remember that. Mm -hmm. But it is hard when you've invested so much time. And it's also hard doing things over and over again. Like, with the crying stuff, I was going to say, the first three goes, it's like you're in it. And then the next, you know, 40, you're like, okay, I'm just faking this now. I can't cry anymore. Yeah. What would be your dream job? Like, my dream job, if I was an actor, would to be in The Greatest Showman because that's my new oh obsession. Oh, my God, Jules. Aim higher. <laughs> that's my favourite. <laughs> or uh, I think a bit sort of part of me would like to do that because I'd love to, like, be able to use all my talents in one. So I'd love to do, like, oh a God. musical movie. Yes. Like, but, like, Chicago. Like, okay. But like really hot I think my – yeah, like something really cool. But mm-hmm. – but, I've always just dreamt of being on a really raw, real, like, HBO-style comedy, like Girls or okay. High Maintenance or something that's just, like... Gritty. Really and, human yeah. being, like, not actors. Yeah. Like, yeah. that appeals to me much more than anything glossy does. Yeah. 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 I yeah. reckon you're going to do it, Dina. Thanks, Julie. I think you will. I hope you're so. just that person. Am I? Yeah. 
What is you do just, you know? I don't know. Just <laughs> seeing you do all these fun things and kill it. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. Thank you for coming for some tea. Thank I love you how so you poured yourself that. another glass. No one's ever done that. It's really nice tea. It is good, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty good at just helping myself <laughs> to food and drinks, aren't I? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>